Great. Uh, let's bring in uh, Mark Levin, the host of Life, Liberty, and Levin. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, Columbus Day morning. What's your reaction to what we just heard live from Israel with Trey Yangst? My reaction is this. Every time Israel's attacked, ultimately it comes down to how many civilians in Gaza are going to be killed. Let me explain something. When we fought big wars and we won, our media wasn't counting how many civilians the enemy are going to lose. They were counting how many civilians we were going to lose, the provocation of the enemy and so forth. Gaza, Hamas knows how dense Gaza is. Hamas knows that their civilians are going to die. Hamas knows that when you slaughter Jews as if you're Adolf Hitler reincarnated, that there needs to be a response. Yes, there's going to be a lot of civilians killed in Gaza. Because as we learned in Iraq and elsewhere, you cannot go door to door, door to door forever without taking massive casualties. The Iranians did it to our own soldiers in Iraq. And I don't believe the Israelis are going to put up with this anymore, regardless of what MSNBC and CNN and the Holocaust denying New York Times has to say about it. These people are fighting for their survival. This is, it's 9-11, but for them it's World War II. Uh, you can't... Uh, and you guys did a very interesting and very good history lesson, but I want to add something to it. We keep calling this the West Bank. It didn't become the West Bank until 1948 when Jordan attacked the Jews. For 4,000 years before that, it was called Judea and Samaria. That's what it is. That is the holy land of the indigenous peoples of Israel. It didn't begin in 1948. It didn't begin 300 years ago. These are the only indigenous peoples who don't get recognition as the indigenous peoples. That's number one. Number two, if we want to take a look at even recent history, then I would encourage your audience to look at Amin al Husani. He was the Palestinian Grand Mufti of Jerusalem in the 30s and 40s. He was allied with Adolf Hitler. He met with Adolf Hitler. He told Hitler, we will do whatever you want us to do in this part of the world, the Middle East, and so forth. And they actually contributed thousands of troops to the Third Reich to fight us and to kill the Jews. That's a piece of history that needs to be told. You don't have to believe me. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Palestinian Authority, not all, but most, and this is their great hero. This is what started all this terrorism in the first place. I think it is a big mistake that to remind the American people of this. That's number, number one, too. And as of right now, according to Fox and the Daily Mail, Barack Obama hasn't said anything. Mm. He hasn't issued a statement. Why is that? I'm going to tell you why. Because Obama and now Biden have betrayed the people of Israel as they have betrayed people around the world. This would not have happened under the prior administration because Trump had his foot on the throat of the Iranian regime the Iranian people had had enough. They were rising up. <clears throat> we gave them $60 billion. I want to make this clear. In oil monies, because Biden has refused to stop the flow of oil to China, to Venezuela, to Syria, from Iran, he is not enforcing the sanctions that were put in place. $60 billion damn dollars. He's turned over billions of dollars to the Palestinians despite the fact that they wouldn't renege terrorism. You don't conduct yourself this way with terrorist states, with people who have a half a century or more history of terrorism and slaughter. How come we're not hearing from the commander? It's on the internet, the video, one of the commanders of this Hamas, who says it's not just the Jews in Israel, it's the Christians, it's the non-believers, it's the soft Muslims, it's the entire world. Pay attention to what these people say, because they mean it. And when we have an appeaser in the Oval Office who's going to allow the Iranian regime, which is behind the whole damn thing, to get nuclear weapons, just think about that. Think about how they'll blackmail us. Think about how they'll threaten us. They'll control the whole region. They've aligned themselves with communist China and fascistic Russia. They've aligned themselves with, with North Korea. They're our enemy. And we send people over there, not just money, a sympathizer to Iran, this guy Malloy, who's now lost his classification, to negotiate 
another nuclear deal when even the U.N. says they have violated every single benchmark? Mm. That they've gone from 2% uh, nuclear capability to 60% in the course of two and a half years? This is, this is appalling. The Biden administration created this situation two and a half years ago. Peace was breaking out in the Middle East. The people of Iran were rising up. The Palestinian Authority was in a box. Hamas didn't dare do what it's doing today. And you know why I'm bringing this up? Because accountability is a damn important thing. Well, Mark, Republican, don't you turning into power? I'm not turning it into a damn thing. People, open your eyes and see what happens. See what happens in Afghanistan. See that the communist Chinese, they thumb their nose at us. They're about to invade Taiwan. They look at all this. They see what the hell's going on in this country. And by the way, a footnote to my Republican friends. Are you the dumbest fools on the face of the earth? You decapitate the House of Representatives. It's unbelievable. I haven't seen Mr. Gates on TV lately. He was on yesterday. We need a strong Republican Party to stand up against the Democrat Party. Now, why is that? Well, who is supporting Hamas today? Hmm. Talib, Omar, the Democratic Socialists, which is their funding and ideological wing, for the squad and all the other Marxists in the House of Representatives. This is a huge problem. The Democrat Party is not fully supporting Israel any more than they fully support the United States. They need to get control of the Hamas wing of the Democrat Party, but they won't. What's Hakeem Jeffries doing about it? Nothing. What did Nancy Pelosi do about it? Oh, she did absolutely nothing. What's Schumer doing about it? Nothing. Zero. And would, and would we you, have our own problems. We have you, where you open to? borders. One more point. We have open borders, endless immigration. People are coming into this country who hate our country. And they're not only coming in from Central and South America. That would be bad enough that people are just flowing in. They're coming in from the Middle East. That's why you have today right. pro-Hamas rallies in New York City, mm. in Florida, in Los Angeles, you wouldn't have seen this 25, 30, 35 years ago, but you're seeing it now. So, Talib, what's your question? Or, uh, Talib, or say goodbye, called, uh, whatever you uh, want. No, no, Mark. Uh, they said Talib says uh, the, the apartheid government of Israel is responsible. They caused the suffering and the resistance represented by Hamas. I also think it's important that the president of the United States, though, it was very vital to have his barbecue yesterday while this war was raging. So his music was blasting from the White House. I think that was important. And Matt Gates says, what's the big deal? We don't have a speaker. We'll get one Wednesday. And we'll all be better off. But he thinks we're much better off when eight people rise up against 210 and oust the only power base Republicans have in Washington. It is insane. Listen. Uh, you're, you're singing to the choir over here. Uh, we better be prepared for war. China is preparing for war. They're plotting for war. You know, I'm sick of this. We're not the warmongers. We're not the imperialists. We're not the colonialists. You see what's going on in the Middle East? That can spread like that to the United States of America. And what are you going to do, lefties and isolations? You're going to blame the United States of America? You're going to join in with the Marxist left? You're going to join in with the Talibs and the Omars and the Bernie Sanders? Because you are right now. You see what's going on? This was preventable in the Middle East. And the Israelis and Americans and British and others who they're slaughtering, kidnapping and raping, decapitating, dragging through the, state, the streets like that third damn Reich. This is what happens. Appeasement. Obama had a, a big theory that he was going to rearrange the Middle East. He was going to have the Iranians as a counterbalance to the Israelis. Look what's happened. Biden, he has blinked. Yesterday, Blinken said, we have no evidence right now, it's firm amazing. evidence, that Iran is behind this. Iran says it's behind it. Hezbollah says it's behind it. Hamas says they're behind it. And our Secretary of State says he doesn't have evidence? What the hell's going on in this country? Yes, and to answer another point I'd like to raise real quickly, we should, we should immediately put in the most crushing sanctions against Iran possible mm -hmm. and enforce them and strangle them economically so the people of Iran, like they try, can rise up and overthrow that regime. And let me tell you something, whether we have reporters on the ground or not, there are not only going to be civilian casualties in Gaza, there's going to be a lot of them. And this is when the media will turn on the Israelis. 
You know what's interesting, America? Do a little history on, your world, on World War II. Did we sit there and count German casualties? Did we sit there and count Japanese and Italian casualties? We had to wipe them off the face of the earth. Am I recommending that? I'm not recommending anything. Right. I'm just saying Israel is now in a war for its survival. This is World War II, the equivalent for Israel. They're going to have to do what they have to do to survive. You don't get to grab little children and slit their throats. No. You don't get to grab uh, IDF soldiers and decapitate them. You don't get to grab women off the street, young women, shove them in your car, drive them over the border, and rape them and murder them. You don't get to do that. And I will tell you something, unlike any other people on the face of the earth, Jews have been through hell. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the Israeli government say, this is the worst day since the Holocaust, the worst day since the Holocaust, there's 7 million Jews in this country, in, in Israel, 7 million. We've had 7.6 million right. illegal aliens come across our border in two and a half years under Biden. Two and a half years. This is a tiny country the size of, we keep hearing how dense Gaza is. Gaza was given to the Palestinians. That was your two-state solution. The land was captured by Israel from the Egyptians in the Six-Day War. They say, okay, here, let's try your two-state solution. Up to today, Joe Biden believes in a two-state solution. I have a question for the whole world. And what exactly will that other state look like? Yeah. Do they get an Air Force? How are we going to stop them? They're going to have course, missile we'll silos? Give, we'll give them aid How and we we'll, we'll, them? they'll get an army. Mark, well said. We understand your emotion and your accuracy in your history lesson. Can't thank you enough. Thanks for joining thank us today. Thanks, Mark. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.